first topic as we delve into Lewis dot structures is going to be electron dot diagrams. What we're going to do here is come up with a pictorial representation of the number of valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are the electrons on the outside of the atom, and they're the ones that enable um, the atom to bond with other atoms and to participate in reactions. We get the number of valence electrons from the group numbers. So we're looking at the columns in the periodic table. All right, let's start with carbon. So when you're drawing these dot diagrams, you're going to put the elemental symbol. And then if I look at carbon, I see that it's in group 4A. So that means that it has four outside electrons, four valence electrons. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four dots around carbon to represent those four valence electrons. The arrangement here doesn't matter. That's an acceptable way to draw it. Somebody might do them in pairs, so they could do two here and two here, or you could do a pair here and a pair here. Um, typically though, as we get into these, what you're going to see is that we kind of just put two on each side, so maximum of two. So two, 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 if we had to go up to eight. All right, let's do sulfur then. Sulfur's in group 6A, so that means it has six valence electrons. And so we'll put the S, and now we need to put six of those electrons. The electrons are going to be represented by these little dots. So two, four, six. And again, if you spread them out a little bit differently, that's fine, um, as long as you're kind of keeping them um, around and you're not putting like all six on the same side, that'd be incorrect. Hydrogen in group 1A. So we have one valence electron. And you can put that one dot, that one electron, anywhere you want. Barium is in group 2A. So we're looking at two valence electrons. And again, distribute them however you want. All right, so in this section, we're going to look at the electron dot diagrams for some of our ions. So here we have chloride. It has a negative one charge, which tells us that it gained one electron. So especially at first, it's very useful to compare the ion to the neutral counterpart. So if I had asked you about just chlorine, so neutral Cl, you would have told me, well, it's in group 7A, so that means it has seven valence electrons. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But since it gained one to become chloride, now we're looking at 7 plus 1, or 8 valence electrons. So I'm going to do Cl, and I'm going to put 8 dots around it, representing those 8 electrons. These look too similar. So the way we're going to designate between an ion and a neutral species is by drawing square brackets. And then you're going to put the charge on the outside there. All right, more examples. Next, let's look at aluminum. If it was neutral, it's in group 3A, so it would have three valence electrons. The neutral ones don't need the square brackets. However, the cation of aluminum has lost, remember it's positive to lose, so it lost three electrons. So basically, these three dots that we drew, these three electrons, aren't there anymore in the cation. So we can just represent this as Al, and we'll do our square brackets, and we'll do three plus on the outside. Xenon's in group 8A, so eight valence electrons. 
8 is the maximum, the ideal number of valence electrons. That means you have a completely full and stable outside shell. Magnesium ion. So typically magnesium would have two valence electrons because it's in group 2A. However, the magnesium ion lost both of those valence electrons. So I would just do something like this with the square brackets again. But no dots because it lost its valence electrons. 